okay, going to show you from the Bible that interracial marriage is in fact fornication. I'm going to show you proof by comparing scripture with scripture because we're not like a cult where we just base doctrine off one or two verses out of context. We compare scripture with scripture. So I'm going to show you that interracial marriage is in fact fornication. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. This is a reference to something back in the Old Testament, which is why it says, as some of them committed. It's referring to a past event. What's the event it's referring to? Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 to 9. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they, and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined her, him, himself with Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the eight in the sight of all the co of the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phineas, the son of El Elzear, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Now I'm going to explain what was going on here, but I want to first address something as well, because you'll say, well, First Corinthians ten eight says, oh, what does it say? It says it gives two different numbers. First Corinthians ten eight. Let me check it. It gives. It says uh, three and twenty thousand, and Numbers twenty five, verse nine, says there is twenty and four thousand. Oh no, you got a contradiction there, because atheists will try to say, oh, it's a contradiction there, or some people might say, well, it's maybe describing a different event. Uh, no, it's not. Because notice how 1 Corinthians 10.8 says that 23,000 fell in one day, while Numbers 25, verse 9, does not say in one day. So in other words, 1 Corinthians 10.8 is saying how many fell during, during that event in a single day, and Numbers 25 is simply saying how many fell in total. That's what's going on there. That's why the number is different. So 1 Corinthians 10 8 is not a contradiction, contradiction or describing a different event from Numbers 25 verses 1 to 9. Because, you know, atheists try to bring the pro-integrationist, pro-racial -mis pro miscegenation uh, heretics will try to bring that up and say he's talking about a different event. No, it's not. But notice how the sin was being committed. The sin being committed was interracial marriage. That's why it mentions that Israel began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And of course the result of that was they began worshiping false gods. Just like when King Solomon, uh, because he had different wives of different kindreds, they turned his heart away from God and towards pagan gods. So interracial marriage results in pagan worship. Which is why you do the history, a lot of the pagan gods of, of you know, various regions like Europe or whatever, were into interracial marriage. Because perversion, like homosexuality and interracial marriage, go hand in hand with paganism. Biblical and historical fact. Well, the sin being committed was interracial marriage. And notice how it mentions how one of the Israelites brought a Midianitish woman into his tent, which was a lawful marriage procedure. In the Old Testament, bringing the woman into your tent before the congregation was the lawful marriage procedure. So in other words, there's an interracial marriage being committed. Because it's an Israelite bringing in a Midianitish woman. It was not to Israelites how, how it should have been. And notice how Paul says the sin being committed in Numbers 25 verses 1 to 9 was fornication. He says, you know, don't commit fornication, paraphrasing, don't commit fornication as some of them have committed. So he's saying the sin they were committing in Numbers 25 was fornication. In other words, interracial marriage is fornication. Because it was clearly an interracial marriage being performed. The sin was being performed in Numbers 25 and Paul identifies it as fornication. So interracial marriage is, in fact, fornication. So don't be deceived. Interracial marriage is a very serious sin. That's why Numbers 25, 1 to 9 says it brought, you know, it kindled the wrath of God. It kindled the anger of God. You know, there are all various scriptures in the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah, which also talk about, I think, Ezra 9, Ezra 10, Nehemiah 10, Nehemiah 13, Nehemiah 9, 
all condemn interracial marriage and, and seriously, very uh, strictly condemn it and give a strong warning against it. And there are other scriptures too, but uh, I'd say the latter parts of the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah, the last few chapters, are some strong, contain some strong verses. Again, Ezra 9, Ezra 10, Nehemiah 9, Nehemiah 13, Nehemiah 10 have some really strong condemnations of interracial marriage. So don't be deceived. It is a very wicked sin and it does bring down the wrath of God. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.